press and seal would work if you have that at your house too. Uh, but dry brush, let's do that one first here. This is a technique that you can do on top of a flat, flat wash, okay? Um, or you can just do it anywhere, really. So you're gonna load paint onto the brush, but then we're gonna dry the paintbrush a little bit, okay? Because we don't want too much water in our brush. This is a great technique for details. So as I, well, let me label first. So we're gonna do our dry brush right here. We're gonna do our saran wrap, and that might be another one where you might have to come back to it. And then we're gonna do blotting and lifting here, and that one you need paper towels for. Okay, so on this dry brush one, I'm going to show you this one and then I'll give you a minute to catch up. And you might have to go back to um, saran wrap in a little bit, but I'll show you what that looks like. So now what I can do is I can go ahead and load up my paintbrush here with some color just like we were before, but then so that I don't have excess moisture. Um, on my paintbrush, I can just kind of roll. I usually do it like at the, the base of the, the base of the bristles right here so that I'm not picking up too much of the color, but more of just the excess water that's in my paintbrush. And so now I should, and you can have like a nice little tip to your paintbrush. This is good, not a flat paintbrush, but, um, but I can write now like, oh, Mrs. Thomas. Right there, and I can have some nice little details. I kind of like that it's kind of opposite that wet on wet, because this is kind of like, oh, maybe I'm working kind of like a messy landscape where there's lots of different colors in that grass. And now I may be in the foreground and I'm wanting to add details to that grass, okay? So go ahead and see if you can do the dry brush. I'm gonna grab some saran wrap while you do that. Okay, I can't find my saran wrap. So I'm gonna have to show you that one um, a little bit later, but I can walk you through it. But basically, you're gonna do a nice juicy wet on wet, and then you put your plastic wrap on there and you squidge it up. So I'll show you that one in a little bit. Okay, we'll come back to that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do blotting and lifting. Am I moving too fast or are you guys okay? Good, okay. So when I'm doing blotting and lifting, Sometimes while we're painting, we go, oh no, I got too much on there and you need to pull it up. You can pull up some of the value, but it has to still be wet. So if I'm coming in here and I'm kind of like, oh, I'm maybe making like a little apple or something, but now I lost my light. I can take a clean paper towel while it's still wet and I can come in here and I can set that clean paper towel and I can kind of rub it on there. And what's gonna happen is it's absorbing it. Now, while you're working, if you even wanna pick up more, you might be able to kind of re-wet it. You just have to make sure that now I don't stick that kind of ickiness into my painting. So I'm gonna fold it over and see if now, see I'm picking up even more of the value there. So the blotting and lifting will allow you to kind of backtrack. It's almost like that kneaded eraser to pull it up a hue. So 
So then in this last part, we've got three sections down here. What I want you to do, I just want you to put like spears and apples in here. So spears and apples or anything kind of, kind of round, okay? So all I want you to do here is to mess around with layers. I'm gonna write layers here. Because oftentimes when we're doing watercolor, we do like one little pass through and we go, oh, all right, that's okay. But a lot of watercolors is about letting it dry and coming back to it. So let's say I'm gonna do that red sphere. So I can come in here, I can kind of find that outside shape. I might even kind of rinse out my brush here and I can kind of pull that color in. So it's almost like that gradient wash, but I didn't put water down first. So I'm trying to make a value shift in it. So I'm not trying to go too fast. But you see how like juicy all that is? And I don't want to, sometimes I just like take it and squidge out the extra water so that I don't have just like puddles on my paper. So now I need to let that dry for a minute. So I might go over here and try something else. So maybe I come over, maybe I'm gonna try like a little yellow and green apple here. And if you have fruit in your house and you wanna go grab something while you're grabbing the salt, then I can come over here. I don't want it to have an outline because we know from drawing one that outlines make our drawings look flat. So I'm just gonna kind of moosh that in. Moosh is an official technique. No, it's not. So that I can kind of have some value changes here. So maybe this is gonna be a little green apple. I started with a really light green here. Might use this kind of light yellow to think about where the stem is going to be. And so I'm gonna let that dry for a minute and now maybe I just try another sphere, another apple, or maybe I want like a little orange. So maybe while I've got this orange here, or I didn't get too much pigment, which I kind of like, I can think about Oh, okay, so maybe I'll do a little wet on wet here. Maybe I'll layer in some of this like yellow ochre here. And you'll have to look at what colors you've got in your set to kind of play around with. Um, and so I'm gonna just let that, that orange be for a minute and I'm gonna come back. So a lot of times with watercolors, you need to let something dry and then come back to it. So I wanna make this sphere um, a little darker. I want to have it more value changes. So I'm going to actually take some green and I don't want my sphere to be green, but green and red are complements. So I can't, oh no, if I got too much, I might need to like dab my paintbrush on my paper towel. I want to just, I want to make a darker red. So for a moment, I'm gonna rinse out my brush and kind of change the value of that. For the moment, it might appear green, but as I kind of take a break and let that dry, so I have to let it dry now, and then I'm gonna put more red on top. So I can be thinking about how am I gonna do this layering in these other two kind of spears or apples or oranges. And so this one's a little bit green, so I could kind of do the opposite and do my red in there, or I've got this darker green, I might try that first. Just like I did here thinking, oh, where's the light coming from? I don't know if I like this green. It's kind of weird. I'm gonna maybe put some blue in there too. I'm gonna make some value changes along the bottom here. But again, I'm thinking, you can decide, do you wanna kind of um, have it nice and smooth? Or am I gonna just, I just emptied my paintbrush of color, kind of squidge out the extra water and then I can kind of spread it just a little bit here. And then here, 
orange is a little bit of a, so now I need to let that dry and then I'm gonna come back. But orange is so light, but I might grab, because again, complementary colors, they're opposite each other on the color wheel so they can make it appear darker. So I might put a little blue in there and you're like blue and an orange. Yeah, you just have to be patient because I'm then gonna kind of spread that out so it's not so dramatic. And then I'm gonna let it dry and I'm gonna put another layer on it. So I'm gonna keep adding layers to these. So I would say as you're kind of working, oh now I might need to like give it a minute, go find my salt, go find my saran wrap, let it dry for a minute. And then I can do another, I can do a third and a fourth layer on that. So there are watercolor techniques. Um, I'm gonna give you some time to finish them, but I want you to make sure that you are labeling each one of them. Good luck.